Hello friends, my name is Nick and today we're going to discuss five plants to kickstart your indoor jungle. Whether you are just entering your indoor gardening era or you've been growing plants for a while but you just want to feel more of that jungle vibe in your home, I'm here to help you out. Today's video is going to be a little bit more open-ended. It's not going to be like, here's five plants for your indoor jungle. It's a little too cookie cutter. We all want to have our own individualized indoor jungles that suits our aesthetic. So I'm going to give you a lot of good direction today but it's a little bit more of a, like choose your own adventure sort of deal so let's get right into it so uh the first thing i think i always talk about in any plant styling sort of video is that the first type of plant that you are always going to need in your home to make it feel like the ultimate indoor jungle is going to be some sort of tree all of the trees that i have in my home are a little too large for me to hold on camera or even get in the frame, but to hold for an extended period of time. So I have a small example of one of the like focal piece plants, trees, whatever you want to call it, that I would highly recommend using in your home. Oh, I don't even think this is going to fit in the camera frame. So this is a Dracaena reflexa. I think I'm just going to put it on the floor. It's giving like Dr. Seuss vibes. Uh, this is a small version. If you go into many houseplant stores, usually they have a large specimen of these available for purchase. and. They have a lot of personality. I feel like no large specimen of Dracaena reflexa is going to look exactly the same. They're all gonna have their own characteristics that's unique to each specific tree. There are also a bunch of other Dracaenas that I love. I have the Dracaena Janet Craig in my home. I have the Dracaena Golden Coast. They both look very similar. They both are just kind of doing the same similar job for me as to be a large plant that's not going to grab too much attention. And that's kind of like the more important thing to think with these focal pieces is that you want them to be large and showy, but you don't want it to be like the all seeing eye of the room. That's not the phrase that I'm looking for. Do you get what I mean? You don't want it to be like the, the only thing you see in the room. I mean, maybe you want it to be the first thing that people notice when they come into your home, but you don't want it to be the only thing that they notice in your home. So I like to go for uh, large plants that aren't too colorful are going to kind of blend in and not going to just like be the, I wanted to say the all seeing eye again, but you, you get what I'm saying. One of my plants that fits the overall vibe and is actually like my favorite house plant ever is my Schifflera Nova. It's huge, it's gonna keep getting bigger. The leaves are giant, they're very jagged and have a fun shape to them, but they're just plain green. They're not really going to steal the show. I mean, it's freaking gorgeous, I love it to the bottom of my heart, but it's not going to catch the eye like a more colorful Aglaenema or Calathea or Croton might when someone first enters a room. But it's got a lot of character, it takes up a lot of space, and I love it. And that's kind of like the three most important things. The only plant that I kind of push people away from, which I'm not going to say don't get it, but make sure you have the ability to care for it if you're going to splurge on an expensive manicured ficus tree, any type of ficus, whether it's the ficus audrey, the fiddle leaf fig, a rubber plant, when they are manicured to look like those gorgeous trees with the tree trunk and then it just all the bush up top, they're not always going to handle your home situations the best. Like if you purchase that large fiddle leaf fig and put it in the dead center of your home where a plant would I'm sure look gorgeous but it's not receiving the best light conditions, that thing's gonna fall apart and it's gonna eventually be garbage and a waste of three or four hundred dollars. So I would definitely recommend if you are going to purchase a really large specimen plant, Schifflera and Dracaena are the two that I would personally recommend the most. But if you have the lighting or if you're supplementing with a grow light, for example, maybe a, a Soltec aspect light or maybe a grow bulb that you can use code, what's my code, Nick2023 to save 15% on in the description. We actually have at the office, I work for Soltec now, I, don't, I think I've mentioned that before. Um, we have a nine foot fiddle leaf fig that is really not receiving any natural sunlight at all, but is completely growing from the light that we supplement with the aspect lights. So it's very much possible to grow a beautiful fiddle leaf fig or more fussy tree. You just gotta make sure that you have the correct light situations for it. So please, if you're going to splurge on it, make sure that you're going to have the lighting conditions for it, the conditions in general. Do your research before you spend too much money on a plant. If it's like $30 or less, you can bring it home and then do the research. But if you're spending like multiple hundred dollars on a specimen plant, please do the research and know what you're bringing into your home and make sure you know how to care for it. But now I'm just starting to ramble, but 
Yes, first and foremost, if you are trying to curate a jungle in your home, a focal plant, a tree, as I like to call it, basically what it is, uh, is going to really fit the bill. It's probably the most important thing. I recommend if you're moving into a new home and you're looking to start a plant collection there, focus on getting a nice tree. And a Dracaena or a Schaeffler, like I said, is perfect, but there are so many more options. Just stressing that you gotta make sure that you have the correct conditions for the plant. It's kind of like that. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink it. Is that how the phrase goes? You can bring a plant home, but you can't make it grow. You gotta give it what it wants. I think that fits the phrase a little bit less now. So uh, another really staple piece that I think is so important to have in the home if you're trying to curate a jungle, jungle -o vibes, jungle -o status, whatever we're calling it these days. I think a climbing plant, specifically a climbing philodendron or a climbing aroid, Monstera deliciosa, is the perfect plant for this. One of my favorite plants that I have in my home uh, is growing up the trellis. It's the philodendron red emerald, super inexpensive, super common philodendron. You're gonna find it in most houseplant stores. And that thing grows super fast, it climbs up. I'm gonna give you guys some footage of some of these plants that I'm talking about, but uh, I've been sick all week if you can't tell from my voice. I'm posting this video tomorrow. It's kind of cloudy, it's really cloudy outside. It's been raining all day. So uh, you're not gonna get the best view of all of these plants, I apologize. But I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I think that. I can do that for you at least. The plant that I'm going to uh, hold up today as an example is going to be this philodendron squamiferum, a uh, fantastic philodendron one well, that's becoming a lot more common these days. I'm pretty sure you can walk into most big box stores and find these. Don't quote me on that. I'm just pretty sure that like Costa Farms has them available now at the big box store, which is nice because this was a much more difficult to find plant when I first got my hands on it. It's just such a fun plant, this one in particular with the fun leaf shape. There's a lot of climbing philodendrons that have the similar leaf shape, by the way. Philodendron Florida is another one that's one of my favorite plants. Uh, Philodendron Scomiferum is a little different in the sense that it has these super fuzzy red petioles, which are a lot of fun. You either love them or you hate them. I think there's a whole lot to love about it. It's so unique, it's so super fun. And when they first come in, as you can see with some of these smaller leaves, because the growing season's just starting and my plant was, it's been growing up above my cabinets. I don't need to explain it to you, I don't need to justify. Uh, <laughs> it comes in really red, uh, bright red, and I think it's just so fun to see. So I'm, I'm a really big fan of this philodendron, but so many other philodendron varieties, most of the ones that I have that are climbing are already attached to something. Like you can see behind me here, I have this gorgeous philodendron tripartitum growing up a moss pole. That one I got from Steve's Leaves, which you can use code Philly Foliage to save 15% on stevesleaves.com if you haven't already. And for all of the codes that I'm mentioning today, I do get a commission if you do use the code. So thank you very much if you do use it for supporting me and supporting small businesses. And as I said, with the Monstera Deliciosa being a perfect option for this as well, this extends well beyond just climbing philodendrons. Climbing Syngoniums are fantastic. Raphidophora tetrasperma, essential plant for the home. You fill that up on a trellis or a moss pole and it looks insane. I remember I used to have the most gorgeous one back in a couple homes ago on my trellis in the background of my videos till it started to get brown on the bottom and everybody was chewing me up for it. But oh yeah, these are such incredible house plants. All of them are so inexpensive, not all of them, but a lot of these plants are super inexpensive in today's market and there's just so much to love about them. So many different leaf shapes. You put like two or three different philodendrons with a couple different leaf shapes on a moss pole or a trellis is probably more likely, and have them climb up. And you're gonna have like just a natural collage, green wall of plants. It's so gorgeous. And it's just like an art piece on your wall that's living and practically taking care of itself. But on the opposite end of the spectrum of climbing houseplants is trailing houseplants. Now, I know I said that I'm not really telling you like specific plants to buy in today's video, but I would tell you, buy a pothos, get a golden pothos, any kind of pothos. This is just a golden pothos right here. It's more green than yellow at the moment, just from the lack of light that it's receiving sitting up on my wall. My walls don't go up the way, so I have it like sitting on top of the wall. Anyway, this is an essential house plant that I did not bring home for probably like three or four years when I first got into gardening. I don't know why, no, I, I thought it was a little too common. 
I hate that I even thought that about this because I've learned over the years that common plants are common for good reason because they're amazing. <laughs> Golden pothos is the perfect plant to fit that description. This is a plant that you're gonna buy it small. It looked probably like half the size of this when I purchased it. It was probably just inside the planter. And now it's starting to trail down. You can see we have a nice little trail right here. We have another little trail starting to form right here, which is nice. And there's gonna be a couple more that start to grow throughout the growing season and during the growing season this is such a fast growing house plant this will grow like six feet over the summertime in my experience so if you're looking for a nice trailing house plant get a golden pothos and there's a bunch of different options too like i said choose your own adventure there's trailing philodendrons like the hartley philodendrons fantastic one highly recommend a bunch of different color options there as well as with the golden pothos syndapsis essential the small leaf syndapsis grows even faster than the golden pothos in my experience it can handle really low light conditions and it tells you everything you need you need to know with the leaf curl and all that you've heard me talk about this in older videos you know what i'm talking about but don't knock the golden pothos don't pass on it if you don't have one go out to the store today this weekend and get a golden pothos you can practically put them wherever if there's a window in the room or a grow light then you're perfectly fine to grow this like i said i have mine growing in a decently darker location and it still grows perfectly fine the leaves look gorgeous they just have less of the yellow variegation than it would have if it was growing in brighter light conditions you can see this leaf back here it's dusty that has some more of the yellow variegation that you might see if this was growing in brighter light conditions you can see just behind me on my shelf right here it's covered in trailing varieties of hoya and peperomia looks gorgeous highly highly recommend but a standard golden pothos is what I'm recommending to you today. This one's gonna give you those jungle vibes very quickly. So if you really wanna achieve jungle vibes super fast, get a couple of golden pothos and buy them larger than just this. This is just a four inch pot. Buy them in an eight inch hanging basket already super full of so many cuttings. There's probably like a hundred cuttings in those pots and they're just gonna spill over and it's just gonna be, it's, oh, it's just gonna be so lovely. So highly, highly recommend golden pothos. So many wonderful trailing plants, but golden pothos is the essential one. Everyone should have it. If you don't have it, go buy it. My fourth option that I would recommend for kickstarting your indoor jungle is going to be a group of plants that we all are very familiar with. It's ferns. I just watered this one. It was a little dry, so it's already perking back up quite nicely. Uh, this one is a Japanese holly fern. I really love this one. I just love the like thicker foliage and just like the wider leaves. Also, just hot tip right in advance. Avoid like Boston ferns, button ferns, any like super thin and frilly fern. It's just, I mean, they're gorgeous. I love all ferns. I've tried them many times. They just die very easily. If you forget about them, like a maidenhair fern, you forget about them for like two days, they sit dry and they just crisp up and are dead. Versus this type of fern right here, it just kind of gets a little like wilty and then I just notice and I go ahead and water it and it perks right back up. There's so many incredible varieties of ferns out there, even that are gonna give you this like frilly appearance that don't have the like super fine leaves. Uh, Aspleniums, I'm obsessed with my uh, Austral Gem Fern, which is a type of Asplenium. Asplenium, the most common variety you're probably familiar with is the bird's nest fern, uh, which doesn't have that ferny appearance. Another one that doesn't have that ferny appearance that I absolutely love is the staghorn fern, super resilient fern, but going back to the more like frilly appearance ferns, uh, some really easy ones include the kangaroo paw fern. I absolutely love that one. And the blue star fern is really awesome. I have one of those in my home. Actually, if I could grab it, I would, but it's got a bunch of new growth coming up on it, which I'm really excited about. That one is a more like light loving fern, so it can appreciate some higher light conditions where some of these more green ferns like to be in lower light conditions. So a great plant to fill in the gaps in your home. You just have to remember to water them. But like I said, if you're getting the like less finicky, frilly varieties, super thin fern ones, then you should have smooth sailing. I've learned the hard way. I love keeping them inside uh, like a cash pow. So I just have a, this plant sitting inside its nursery pot inside a cash pow so there's no hole in the bottom of this. And then I put some Lekka pebbles in the bottom here. So it's just like those clay pebbles that you use for semi-hydro. I have it sitting on top of it and then I let the water sit down the Lekka pebbles. And in this case, the roots have worked their way down into the Lekka pebbles and it just works for me because I just can let water sit in the bottom of the planter and my fern is practically taken care of. Uh, it's like a self-watering sort of deal, but a little bit more hands-on and aggressive for plants that are really like to stay moist. So. Not really anything groundbreaking or special, but it just works for me. There's also asparagus ferns, which are not true ferns technically, but they look very close 
in appearance to ferns, so we know them as ferns. There's so much going on outside today, I apologize. It's just like keg trucks dropping off kegs at the bars and just banging all over the ground, and now we got a truck idling, idling outside. I don't even think you can hear it. I'm always like, sorry for the sound, and I go back and I'm editing the footage, and it's not even there. Anyway, asparagus fern. Oh, this one is so wild. Uh, this is going to give you that frilly appearance, a little different than like the Boston fern, mind you, very different, but this is going to give you that much frillier appearance, more like ethereal bohemian vibes, cottage core, but is not going to behave the way that like the Boston ferns do. You still have to keep up with these, and if you forget to water these, they're gonna drop the needles. Like you can see, if you look carefully, that there's some like dead parts of the plant with the needles in them. So good luck not having your pot of soil full to the brim of the needles of your asparagus plants. But they still are very resilient plants. And the thing I love about them too is if I go a little too far gone to my asparagus, if I let them dry out a little too far and the whole thing is just a crisp up mess, you can cut it all the way back to the soil. There is a whole city of things going on down here in the root system. It's very rhizomatous and tuberous and uh, if you just cut this whole thing back, it's going to immediately, like within a week, you're gonna have new growth shooting off from the base. So uh, I would refrain from throwing out your asparagus if you do go a little beyond. And that can be said for, honestly, most ferns, like a maidenhair fern. If you do go a little far beyond, a couple days beyond uh, watering it and the leaves do die back, that root system's a little bit more resilient than the leaves are. So cut that whole thing back. And if you keep it moist, you might be surprised in a week or two's time, you will have some new fronds growing out. So ferns are more resilient than we think, but uh, they're definitely not resilient houseplants. <laughs> They're hard to maintain, let's put it that way. But asparagus kind of fit the bill with ferns as well, with that appearance. This one is just all over the place. It's like shooting out like fireworks, Katy Perry style. So yeah, I'm here for it. It's got a lot of freaking character and I love it. And last but not least, the, oh my God, this thing is such a nightmare. Also, these asparagus get like little thorns on them. So you gotta be kind of careful with them, but I don't really have a problem with it myself. Uh, the last plant that I want to talk about is using something that has a much more like structural appearance, like the outlier plants. The best example that I can think of, oh gosh, it's heavy today. This is my <laughs> Sansevieria Dracaena that they are called now. Very different in appearance. So the Dracaena I showed you earlier, the reason why they're classified as Dracaenas now is their flowers exactly the same as Dracaena flowers, but um, we're gonna call this the Sansevieria because it's, we're gonna more know it as. This is a Sansevieria trifasciata. This one in particular, I think is like the, oh God, I can't remember. It's not the black gold variety. Maybe it is the black gold variety. I don't remember, it doesn't matter. There's so many varieties of Sansevieria trifasciata. So many of them look similar. So many of them look different. Some of them have different statures to them. I really love just, a plain, strappy Sansevieria trifasciata. It just really gets the job done, as you can see right here. I love the way it looks as a yellow plant coming out of this yellow planter right here. I have it, we're getting a little specific, but I have it just sitting inside its planter. It's in a terracotta planter. And the reason why I haven't repotted it in here, well, I guess there's multiple reasons because I don't have a matching tray for this aesthetic wise I need but I like how tight it is together once I go ahead and repot it in this uh, larger planter it's going to spread out oh goodness almost up potted it right there uh, it's gonna spread out a little bit and I just really like how tight it looks I don't mind it being a pot inside a pot I guess it's all our own personal aesthetic I don't mind it. And if you did mind something like this, you can just kind of cover it up with like Spanish moss, preserve Spanish moss or any kind of just like cover to use to just make it look more your vibe. But I think this is totally fine. But these plants that just don't have leaves on them, I guess, just provide so much juxtaposition compared to all the other plants in the area. For example, over by my mirror, I have a beautiful Dracaena a tree dracaena, a climbing philodendron, and then a smaller bushy plant, my aglianema, spring snow. But then to the left of it directly, I have my Sansevieria trifasciata laurentii sitting next to my bark heart. And just those four plants all right next to each other 
all look so different, but the three plants by the mirror all have similar vibes where they kind of fit one another. But the Sansevieria over to the left kind of separates it as a separate space in my home. So even though I'm in a small space, it kind of just like designates different areas with those different vibes. So like I said, really appreciate the juxtaposition that these plants give. And there's more than just Sansevieria. This is just the most common example that I had to give today because you're gonna see Sansevierias at every houseplant store. And I would say most people probably have a Sansevieria of some sort in their collection. Uh, there's also uh, Jungle Cacti are fantastic. This is a Ripsalis right here. This one's a Ripsalis of Waldiana. A couple different varieties. None of them are within reach. A lot of succulents are going to give you the same vibe. Epiphyllums are fantastic. That fern leaf cactus, if you know what I'm talking about. Amazing. Totally going to give you those fun structural vibes. No leaves, no problems. We're obsessed with it. I would highly recommend getting a couple different kinds of these more structural plants in your home. Like I said, they're really going to provide juxtaposition, but they're also going to fill in the gaps in a different way that like the ferns do and like a golden pothos would. And in this case with the ripsalis, this is a trailing plant that can grow down. I have this growing up on a shelf where the snake plant is growing upright and it can fill in kind of a nice little space on the floor that needs a spot. I love using snake plants to block out if I have an outlet in my home and I don't like to see the plugs sitting in it, just coming out of the wall, going wherever they're going, snake plant is the perfect plant to cover that up. Snake plants don't require that much light, but they prefer a lot of light to grow their fullest potential, but uh, they will totally withstand low to no light situations for a given amount of time. Ripsalis and jungle cacti, on the other hand, are going to appreciate a little bit more light, so definitely pay a little bit more mind to them when it comes to the lighting conditions. But there's, of course, more varieties than just these cacti. Any kind of cactus, euphorbia, the like upright growing euphorbias that look just like cacti that I feel like are fantastic looking, very beautiful architectural pieces, fantastic plants, highly recommend. They're really gonna get the job done. And those can even be used as vocal pieces. If you're getting a large enough plant, that'll kind of kill two birds with one stone if you have a large focal piece that's also extremely architectural that could be really good for like more modern spaces. So many cool plants that are leafless or more structural outlier plants, as I like to call them, that are really going to, like I said, give you some really nice juxtaposition in comparison to the more leafy, foliage, colorful plants that you're going to have in your home. So that's going to do it for today's video. Five plants to kickstart your indoor jungle. Just to recap, we talked about a focal piece plant, a tree, basically a bush, a tree, a cactus, whatever you want. I highly recommend Dracaenas and Schifleras, but like I said, choose your own adventure. Just make sure if you're going to splurge on a large tree that you're going to have the correct care conditions for it because I would just hate for anyone to spend a couple hundred dollars on a plant and for it to end up in the garbage. Never fun. A climbing philodendron or climbing monstera, any kind of climbing plant that can climb up a wall or a moss pole is going to have a huge impact on your home, almost as huge as the focal piece, but actually might even grab a little more attention because they're just a little bit more interesting, dare I say. Uh, also, a trailing plant, golden pothos, or any pothos is the one I recommended to you, but syndapsis, philodendrons are fantastic. And as I also mentioned, peperomia and hoyas, as you can see behind me, are also great options, although they do grow a little bit more slower. So if you do want to get right to that, you want to kickstart your indoor jungle, the pothos is perfect for you. Ferns were our fourth option. I love a good fern. It took me a long time to learn how to care for them, but I learned with the correct fern choices. You're going to have some smooth sailing. And last but not least, the structural plants, the leafless plants, the outlier plants that, as I said six times, are going to give you that juxtaposition that your home is desperately going to need when you're filling it with all these gorgeous, leafy houseplants. So thank you so much for joining me on today's video today. Let me know the plants that you would choose in these categories if you'd like to share. I'd love to hear because I have my choices. But like I said, this is choose your own adventure. I'd love to hear your choices as well. So if you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. If you would like, you can subscribe to my Patreon to support me monetarily. I will leave all the links of referral codes and stuff that you can use to buy yourself something nice and earn me commission in the links in the description below. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.